สวัสดีครับรายการท่องเที่ยวเรียนรู้ภาษาอังกฤษกับครูแม็กนะครับตอนครูแม็กพาเที่ยวในแคนาดาตอนนี้จะเป็นสาคดีเกี่ยวกับแปดซาลมอนนะครับในแคนาดาเนี่ยจะมีตระกูลประมาณ7สายพันธุ์ของแปดซาลมอนนะครับที่แพร่หลายและสถานที่เนี่ยเป็นที่วิจัยนะครับทำการทดลองเกี่ยวกับการเลี้ยงปลาแซลมอนโดยเฉพาะเลยนะครับปลาแซลมอนที่เรากินอย่างในซูชิแล้วก็หมายว่าจะเป็นสแต็กแบบปลาแซลมอนเนี่ยจะมีความหลากหลายของคุณภาพนะครับจะมีปลาแซลมอนที่เลี้ยงจากในฟาร์มหรือปลาแซลมอนที่ถูกจับมานะครับและนี่ก็คือสถานที่ที่คุณแม็กอยากจะแนะนําให้พวกเราได้มาเห็นครับนี่คือไทม์เทเบิลของการเติบโตของปลาแซลมอนนะครับในตารางอุณหภูมิที่เหมาะสมในการเลี้ยงปลาแซลมอนเนี่ยนะครับอยู่ที่ประมาณ10องศาเซลเซียสนั่นหมายความว่าปลาแซลมอนเนี่ยเป็นสัตว์ที่ชอบน้ำค่อนข้างเย็นนะครับเดี๋ยวเราไปติดตามดูกันเลยนะครับอะไรกัน we just uh, uh-huh. we just gonna come in uh, hatchery hatchery to see salmon so this is a great opportunity to do a little tour for ink talk student today This is a place where they keep the salmons. Salmons. So we have a chance to be here. The different kind of salmon. They usually like to stay between 8 degrees Celsius, not all the way up to 15, but over 15, like 20 degrees Celsius. The salmon usually die. Two million chinook a year. Two million chum, about 500,000 coho, and steelhead we do about 50,000. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so we do four and a half million fish a year. Wow, that's a lot. Sockeye, no. We don't do no, sockeye. No. Sockeye are prone to disease, oh. and uh, it's fine in the in the wild because they're at like in a fish hatchery we keep fish. In a much more dense, they live much closer together than they will in the wild. Mm-hmm. So get some pictures. these guys are very prone to disease when they're raised in dense conditions. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So in this era where usually the summers are hotter and there's less, less snow in the winter, the water levels are getting lower and lower, and a fish that size trying to make its way up to the shallow river would have a lot more trouble than a, a 20 pound fish half that size. So there's probably a variety of reasons, but this is kind of how big a s t u c k can get in the Kitimat River now. And, and these are the ones that are coming in right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is the biggest, yeah. bigger than this. Yeah. Sorry. This is the biggest size. This is about as big as they get for a s h u n u k now. Yeah. But most s h u n u k are around 20 pounds now, or oh, okay. about 10, 10 to 15 kilograms. So I wonder one thing, like what kind of salmon do they use for the Japanese sushi? You know, like raw fish. Yeah, so it's a it's a variety. Usually they try oh. to use sockeye. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And uh, but most places use farmed salmon. Oh, farmed farm salmon. Farmed Atlantic salmon because uh-huh. it's much cheaper. Right. Yeah, oh. Okay. So usually if you go to a really good restaurant mm-hmm. and you ask for a wild mm-hmm. wild uh, salmon, you'll get the sockeye. Mm-hmm. But most restaurants will give you. If you're going to one that's not quite as good, they'll give you the farmed Atlantic salmon in most of the oh, okay. sushi mm-hmm. places. Mm-hmm. And that's, so uh, yeah, you can see the Atlantic salmon on the bottom there. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that are generally farmed. Oh, okay. This is at the bottom. Yeah. Atlantic. Uh, they use it for the farms, and uh, we eat this kind of sushi, like raw fish. Yeah. This one. So the best sushi is made with these sockeye right here. Oh, which one? The best. These guys. This guy right yeah. here. Oh, the best sushi. Yeah. So, like uh, from the farmers and uh, from the natural, which one is much better? Oh, the natural for sure. Oh, because yeah, it got sweet. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, the farmed fish mm-hmm. they're fed. Uh, well, you'll see what the, the we feed the our fish the same thing the farmers feed them. Okay. And uh, mm-hmm. it. Uh, You know, most people when they think of salmon, they think nice orange or red, nice bright, tasty meat. Right. Yeah. The reason the farm fish meat is that color is because they dye it. Mm-hmm. But uh, the sockeye, they go out to the ocean and they eat shrimp and krill. Oh. Okay. And so they get that beautiful orange, okay. orangish red yeah. meat yeah. naturally. Well, what I have seen the most from the uh, documentary, you know, yeah. like in Alaska, I have seen this kind of salmon a lot. Yeah, so those are sockeye. Oh, okay. So they. Those are kind of the iconic salmon that a lot of uh, documentaries will be about. Mm-hmm. They've got the striking green head and, right. and the, the bright red body. Yeah, they just come and 
do kind of spawning things yeah, you know, exactly. before they die. Yeah, right? They also yeah. have to do, do the same so, thing. They're probably uh-huh. the best for eating, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, then uh, next, probably the coho, eh? Yeah, it's, uh, and some then, people think coho. Uh, I, I myself it's consider okay. it it's the best yeah, so salmon for it our sushi, idea, you know, for I Japanese know. food right there. But they, they do a lot of this for farm. Put an opening, there's still a trout. Yeah. They, to, when they get to about this big, they enter a stage called the smolting stage, and that's when they leave fresh water and go to the ocean. Mm-hmm. And they go live in the ocean for anywhere between one and five years, depending on the type of salmon. And then just from the scent of their river, they can smell it all the way out into the ocean and they mm. follow the scent all the way back to within a kilometer or two of where they were born. But the thing is, like you say, like they were born in a fresh water, right? Yeah. And in, 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 in a maybe lake or something like liver, yeah. but but they can actually swim in the sea. Yeah, they so come back as, to the liver. Yeah, as juveniles, uh-huh. they some salmon spend a few months in the fresh water, some spend up to a year. And then they undergo a process called smoltification. Their mm-hmm. body changes completely, and they go live in the ocean for anywhere between one to three years. Wow. So they're born in freshwater, go live in the ocean for the middle of their life, come back to freshwater to spawn, and then they all die. Oh, okay, I yeah. see. Yeah. You said the Amazing now. You probably understand more about the story of the salmon that be used for sushi. So this guy is a technician or who have the knowledgeable things, and he can explain a lot of details to us, you know, what the salmons, you know, time to spawn, you know, spawn, and they get caught, and then the babies go up. Like from the eggs down, and, and that's the way it is. So salmon usually you stay in the liver for a, a couple of years, and then they move out into the seawater, and then come back later, and then they die. So these are salmon. It's amazing to be here. So we get more the knowledgeable about the salmon fish in the office here at Kinemat Canada on our tour today. These are called. Okay. These are called alevins. Okay, okay. And these are what from eggs that come to this stage. At this stage, they can't they can't swim yet. Mm-hmm. They can't hold the position in the water. So this orange thing you see, this is called a yolk sac. Okay. And this is something that they absorb. And as they absorb the yolk sac, they get stronger and stronger. Mm-hmm. And once their yolk sac is absorbed, they actually look like this. And this is called the fry stage. Mm-hmm. This is where they're able to swim out of the gravel. Oh, it takes about a hundred days. Yeah. Wow. So, 100 days at 10 degrees Celsius water. Wow. So, if it was 5 degrees Celsius, the water, it would take 200 days. Whoa. If it was 20 degrees Celsius, it would take 50 days. Mm -hmm. The fish... Wow, that's very interesting. Okay. All right. right. Now, guys, you can see it clearly now about salmon eggs, how they get developed from times 100 days. If the temperature isn't right, then they won't be able to be able to get bigger and grow and uh, fly out just like this generation right here. All right, just keep going. So our, for us, step one is collecting adult fish. So some hatcheries have what is called swim-in. So we call our adult fish brood stock. And that's where we take all our eggs and sperm from. So some places have adult fish that just swim right into the hatchery. Unfortunately, we don't. We have to actually go collect them in the river. Mm-hmm. You can see against while we have huge nets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And we have all sorts of jets. and we go out manually and collect all the fish we need to run our programs. So we collect by hand anywhere between 600 chinook to you know, like 400 coho, and so it's extremely labor intensive. It's extremely fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we use fishing rods, nets, and we're out from. July 1st to early winter, almost every second or third day on the river, taking care of business catching fish. It's called the process of imprinting, mm-hmm. and that's when they develop the memory of where mm-hmm. they were supposed to go back to. So if we release them all here, they'd all come, they'd back, all here. come back here. So we release them oh, all yeah. throughout the river, basically concrete channels. We use we, them to we rear. Walk down there, right? Absolutely. I'm actually going to get some food yes. and then the uh, little guy can feed Aww. the fish in a minute here. <laughs> um, so, just got a test for you guys. Cool. We've got two kinds of water here. Uh huh. Which one do you think is which? Oh, oh clear, this is clear. Yeah. This is maybe uh, seawater, right? This is the well water. Oh, water water. Yeah, oh. this is the underground water. Oh. 
And this is the stuff out of the river. Oh, okay, I see. So this come fish in it. That's a salmon. Yeah, so this one has The baby salmon, guys. Salmon. Because they're fast. And these are steelhead in here. Cool. 100,000 coho in here. Really? Yeah. 100,000. Oh my god. 100,000 four gram coho. Oh. Guys, let's take a look at salmons. These are the oh, the salmons. They do some kind of experiment and they try to protect the nature and leave all these salmon back. You know, it's amazing to be here. Really, I cannot believe it. So, this is. Yeah, you see the salmon, the school fish of salmon. I cannot even. I'll try to zoom in and check it out. So these guys are one year old. Only one yeah, years old? Yeah. Wow. Oh, it takes time. With us for one more year before they're yeah. released. Oh, yeah. Steelhead spend two years in fresh water. And so these guys will be with us for two full years. Next spring we'll release them and they'll all head to the ocean. Oh, okay. Once guys, they get two years in, they're going to put them back to the ocean. Yeah. A little bit at a time. Not a little bit out of time. Too. We do have a wash up yeah. pool. Is it a lot? Water. Oh, is it? Here, I'll go get him a smaller scoop that floats. How about what, that? What do you feed this? No, either, yeah, either one. He could go on either side. Oh, okay. 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 Enough? Yeah, we'll get a smaller one. So the one come for... Oh, yeah, they're coming. They're coming for food. Oh, I can't see. Yeah. Okay, now let's take a look. Is this, they get scared. They get scared. Yeah, oh, they, they might come and eat. Okay, let me see. Do that. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, let's see. They get scared. Go. Oh, yeah, some started to come. Look at my boy, you know, in uh, feeding the uh, baby salmon. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, there's 200,000 in here. 200,000. 200,000. Wow. See me, she? It's just a eat about 17 kilograms per day. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. And how much in this bucket you said about this? Yeah. Adventure for our family here to be at the uh, Kitimat, Canada. So you can see my son, he feeding the fish. Yeah, the baby fish of the salmon. And then after two years, when they grow up, so they're gonna release those uh, salmon here back to the ocean or the liver. So those gonna go up and um, swim across the ocean and come back and to the liver or the lake in Canada. And later they spawn, make a lot of babies and eggs. That's how they, you know, take care. Take a look, take a look. Look now you can see salmon's query because they don't really swim that fast. So, you know, these are about one year old. Those are very small salmon. I would say about four to six or seven inches. Once it get two years later, they're just gonna release those salmon back to the ocean or the liver. วงจรชีวิตของปลาแซลมอนนะครับจะใช้ระยะเวลาประมาณ 3-5 uh, right by the, the ocean right here. This is the ocean guys. I thought it was a little <laughs> liver, but it's actually the ocean. Oh. <laughs> 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 
cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you see, they put an engine. See? It's a good, uh, fantastic time to come to Canada. So he's gonna go and uh, you know get the crabs, and he's gonna come back because he put the bait in there. So it's gonna take about 20 minutes. fantastic uh, trips to be here we have done a lot of trips and journey ever since the US Colorado Arizona California Los Angeles San Diego SeaWorld and eventually we're here at Kinemat Canada right here Can't see him no more. Let's go too far. Right here. Hopefully he's gonna come back with a lot of crabs, you know, 20 minutes later. Alright guys, that's about it. We're just gonna keep up here in Kitty Mat. And this is myself. I'm a t-shirt man at Ink Talk. Thanks to uh, catch up with our our you know, update news and uh, hopefully we get to see uh, you know more something beautiful later.